Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video I wanted to talk about the recent discovery of yet another dwarf planet or a dwarf-like uh, planet uh, in our solar system that we don't actually have in Universe Sunbox Square yet, but we're going to add it manually. And also about the idea of thousands of undiscovered dwarf planets that we're going to find in the next um, 10, 100 or possibly 1000 years. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> And so, on October of 2016, um, scientists have announced that they've discovered a new dwarf planet. Basically, an object that's uh, relatively large to be circular, but not large enough to be a planet. Uh, similar to this one right here, known as 2002 2UX25. And they've already named this object as 2014UZ224. Now, unfortunately, we don't actually have this object here, so we're going to add it manually, and I'm going to show you what it possibly looks like. And so here it is. Here's the object that I just manually made. It's 2014 UZ224. It's a little bit smaller than some of the other um, objects. Like, for example, if you were to compare this to, let's just say, Maki Maki, it's, it's actually a lot smaller. Sedna, uh, Pluto, and so on. And obviously, Earth here would be a gigantic planet in, um, in comparison to this object. But the thing about 2014 UZ224 is that it's actually really, really far away. It's, as a matter of fact, it's um, one of the farthest objects we've discovered so far with an orbit of about 1100 years. Now, the farthest object we obviously know is Sedna, and this is uh, an object with something like 12,000 year orbit. Um, Aries is relatively uh, far away as well, but its orbit is only 561 years, but this is somewhere in between. And the coolest thing about uh, this object is the way we discovered it. It was actually a kind of a new technology known as as a dark energy telescope, um, which was meant to map the um, galaxy, the galaxy of Milky Way. But uh, accidentally, we've actually were able to discover uh, this dwarf planet and we'll probably discover a lot more in the next few years. And specifically here, I'm talking about possibly thousands of new findings. And um, this, according to Mike Brown, is how many of these objects we actually have um, in our solar system. Now, Mike Brown is famous for basically demoting um, Pluto which is right there, from uh, from a planet to dwarf planet. He's actually, uh, he was instrumental to not only uh, demoting this object to a dwarf planet, but also kind of defining the idea of a dwarf planet as well. And so according to him, there's like thousands, at least a thousand of them out there. And I actually wanted to kind of show you um, where they might have come from and how we actually think or why we actually think there is so many of them. So let's actually go back to uh, a kind of a new simulation. We're gonna create uh, a kind of a fake looking early solar system. We're gonna place the sun in the middle and we're also going to add um, the rings here. We're going to add the rings of Jupiter. But instead of the actual uh, particles, we're going to add bodies. And let's just add like, I don't know, 50 different uh, bodies here. They're going to be relatively heavy in, in mass. And we're going to enable this button right here and place them at a distance of, let's just say about 0.1 astronomical units to about 0.2. And we're going to place them around our sun. And there you go. So there's a bunch of moons orbiting around um, the sun now. But these are not actual moons. They're basically tiny, tiny, tiny rocks, uh, similar to essentially the dwarf planets that we've kind of been discovering. Now, the reason I decided to add them here is because I want to simulate, or I want to show you how um, and where all of these dwarf planets may have come from. So we know that in our solar system, there is something called asteroid belt, and we think that it was actually a kind of an undeveloped planet. It was a planet that was supposed to form, but never did because of, most likely because of Jupiter. And so what we're going to do here is we're actually going to place Jupiter somewhere right here where it would be in relation to the um, asteroid belt. And then let's see what happens to these moons after a few orbits uh, around the sun. And as you can probably imagine, things will start going um, really, 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 really differently for all of these different moons. They're going to start changing orbits. They're going to start... Uh, possibly even becoming moons of Jupiter, as this one almost did. But for the most part, all of them will actually change orbits. And Jupiter is actually going to kick them out into the outer solar system. Now, I'm actually going to just enable trails for now, just to give you a, a, a different type of image here. So there's those uh, dwarf planets, or moons, as you wanna, if you want to call them that, flying around and escaping into, uh, into outer solar system. Now, some of them will actually po possibly acquire a very elliptical orbit. Some of them might even completely escape the solar system. 
But this is how we think many of them were actually created over the billions of years of, our, um, of the creation of our solar system. Now, if I run this for a very long time, all of them, for the most part, will escape. Some of them will remain in orbit, some of them will acquire a kind of a resonance with Jupiter. And this one here surprisingly even changed its uh, direction completely, which is actually very unusual. Um, but um, this is where all of these thousands of dwarf planets may have come from. Now, if there's like a thousand of them, and if each of them weighs approximately similar to, let's just say, one of these minor objects, like for example, um, Sedna or Haumea or uh, Makemake, in that case, uh, all we need to do uh, to find out the total mass of these um, dwarf planets is to actually multiply by about a thousand, and it will actually give us an idea of roughly how much mass there is out there that was in the asteroid belt, and how much of it basically escaped and left uh, the the inner solar system into the outer solar system. Now, as you can see, this will actually probably take us a little bit longer than, um, than just a few years. And so as they orbit around the sun and as they interact with Jupiter, a lot of them will uh, either fly away completely or collide or combine into something else or possibly um, change their orbit dramatically. So a lot of these other moons have already acquired very elliptical orbits. Now, so, all right, so that's that's kind of a uh, simulation that we can run for a while just to see what happens in the future, but I actually wanted to show you something else here. And so let's imagine that this is actually how all of those dwarf planets were formed. Let's go back to the original solar system that we saw before, and let's actually look at the asteroid belt that's right here again. So imagine that those rocks stayed here. Imagine that all of those thousands of rocks remained here. Jupiter was not in the area to kick them out. What would have happened? Well, this is essentially where we would have actually formed the fifth terrestrial planet. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to do this right now. So let's just assume for a second that Jupiter did not interact with these uh, dwarf planets um, or these large, large asteroids, like for example, uh, Vesta. And instead, it created, or um, all of these uh, dwarf planets collided into one and created what would be a fifth planet. So basically what would happen is this. So let's just go for a second here and place a bunch of uh, these beautiful dwarf planets around each other. And so this is what would have happened after like billions and billions of years. They would essentially all collide into one large object. These would be become protoplanets and they would eventually turn into a terrestrial planet. And this is essentially how Earth, Mars, Mercury and Venus were formed. Uh, and uh, this is what might have been formed in, in the area known as the asteroid belt. But once again, Jupiter didn't allow it to happen. And instead, um, many of these asteroids, uh, many of these dwarf planets escaped and uh, flew around the solar system. And now we're actually rediscovering them by using all of this advanced technology. Now this actually even acquired a couple of moons here, as you can see, uh, from these fragments that are orbiting around it. But uh, the collisions are not over yet. And anyway, so this is how we think the planets were formed. This is the modern th theory of uh, planetary creation. And so how big would have been this planet? How big would it actually have been if it actually didn't lose all of its mass to uh, Jupiter's interaction? So let's actually go to Ceres and um, assume that this is what an average uh, planetary body in this region was in terms of mass. So it's about uh, 476 kilometers and it's about uh, 9 times 10 to the power of 20 kilograms in terms of mass. Now if there's like thousands of these bodies out there, basically if there's, you know, if you were to combine it with Ares, which is slightly bigger, if you were to combine it with Makimaki, uh, Haumea, and a lot of other objects, how big would it have gotten? Well, to, to find this, we're going to basically multiply by this by 1,000. In other words, we're going to increase this number by about three zeros. We're going to add three zeros here, and this is what you'll get. It's going to be this big. It's essentially almost Earth-like in size. This series has now dramatically increased in size. It is a lot more massive. It's about uh, 13 masses of the moon, obviously much larger than any of these dwarf planets, including Pluto. And it's essentially on par with some of the planets. Like It's actually relatively uh, larger than Mercury. It's between v Mercury and Venus, and it's possibly even bigger than Mars. So there you go, it's actually bigger than Mars, but obviously not as big as um, Earth. So this would have been the fifth terrestrial planet here. It would have been about this size, maybe a little bit bigger, possibly a little bit smaller. We don't really exactly know, but it would have looked like this. It would have been at a distance of about 
2.7 astronomical units and um, if it actually had some kind of a climate uh, or some kind of an atmosphere here which I'm going to add to it right now and if it also had water on the surface which it probably would have because there's quite a lot of water um, from objects like Vesta then in this case um, it would basically still be a frozen world because it's actually really far away from the sun so it would have been basically a frozen planet uh, with possibly just ice caps everywhere and temperature of about an average temperature of about minus 70 degrees Celsius, which is kind of similar to the lowest temperature uh, on our own planet Earth, which would be somewhere in Antarctica or something. But this is uh, what uh, this would have been, uh, and, I, and I'm going to leave the name as Ceres because it's the largest object in that particular um, area. And this, is, this would have been the fifth planet from the Sun. But Jupiter decided to not have this uh, happened and instead kicked out all of these asteroids and all of these large rocks into the outer solar system. And so that's uh, what uh, modern scientists think may have happened to the asteroid belt. This is why, even though there should be some kind of a planet here, it's not there. And this is why we have so many of these um, dwarf planets orbiting in the outer solar system and in the other outer regions, uh, including, of course, the asteroid belt with Ceres and Vesta here. And that's all I wanted to say in this video. I basically wanted to introduce uh, the new uh, dwarf planet and also kind of talk about uh, the future findings as well. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And if you still haven't subscribed, uh, do subscribe and consider supporting this channel on Patreon. And also don't forget that you can always contact me on Facebook or you can go on Twitter and tweet to me because I always reply to those messages right away. Also, there is a Snapchat now, which you can totally add me on and, and basically send me messages there or uh, just have fun watching some of my funky or funny videos. I'll see you guys in the next video. Give me later. And as always, bye bye. And before we finish this video, let's actually go to Earth and let's collide our planet Earth with that newly discovered rock known as 2014 UZ. 224. Now, if, you, uh, if you're wondering why it's called 2014 and not 2016, it's because it was originally uh, seen, it was originally uh, discovered, but not recognized back in 2014. And if it collides with our planet Earth, the end. Game over, and everyone is pretty much dead. This would probably destroy the humanity. Or maybe most of us. Some of us maybe would have survived if we were like, on the other side of the planet. But uh, I highly doubt it. Anyway, see you guys later. Bye-bye.